Oh no, that's not what a respiratory therapist does. Hi, I am Cheryl, a respiratory therapist in NUH, and I'm going to explain more about what respiratory therapists do using a real life case I manage. I had a patient who was admitted into the intensive care unit gasping for air. He was diagnosed with pneumonia, which is an infection of the lungs resulting in breathing difficulty. My job is to help improve the patient's breathing and give his lungs time to heal. First, I assess his condition by sending his blood for a quick blood analysis to check his oxygen and carbon dioxide levels. The results showed that he had low oxygen and I worked with the doctor to assess and come up with the right therapy and treatment plans for the patient. I'm going to demonstrate how I treat my patients through the use of a mannequin. So in this case, I started the patient on a hypomasal cannula, which is a tube with two prongs that go inside the nostrils to deliver warm and humidified oxygen. I continued to monitor the patient, but when the high flow nasal cannula could not help him, I suggested and discussed with the doctor to intubate him and put him on a mechanical ventilator. Respiratory therapists are trained to do intubation. Most of the times, I assist doctors with the intubation, which is to put a tube through the mouth into the windpipe. The tube is attached to a mechanical ventilator which pushes air into the airways. I continue to monitor the patient and adjust the settings of the ventilator, giving him more or less oxygen-blended gas at a faster or slower breath rate per minute, depending on his blood gas results. I'll use an analogy to explain the escalation in the treatments for the patient. Imagine a cannula or ventilator as a blowing fan with different speeds. The hypo-nasal cannula is like a fan blowing at a speed of 5. But for this patient, who is gasping for air and needed all the help that he could get, what I did was to put him on a mechanical ventilator which is similar to turning the fan up to the maximum speed of 10. So he need not have to use much effort and energy to breathe. After a few days, when the patient's lung started to heal, I lowered the settings on his ventilator and eventually weaned him off the ventilator when he could breathe on his own. Apart from managing the use of ventilators and providing oxygen and medications to the lungs, we also assist doctors during bronchoscopy procedures, which is the use of a scope with a camera that is inserted to the lungs to view and collect samples for laboratory tests. Essentially, we provide care and manage patients who are admitted into the hospital with lung injuries or lung conditions such as asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, acute respiratory distress. We also care for patients who are struggling to breathe due to other medical conditions. We initiate therapies and treatments to support the patient's breathing while they recover from their lung or medical conditions. One, our lungs is one of the largest organs in our body. The total surface area of both our lungs when opened out flat is roughly the same as the surface area of a tennis court. Two, each of our lungs contains about 300 million balloon-like structures called alveoli and when they are filled with air, our lungs become the only organ that can float on water. Three, Two persons of the same height but different weights will still have similar lung capacity. A heavier person doesn't have a bigger lens. Hope I've helped you better understand the job of a respiratory therapist. Thanks for watching and goodbye!